The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, coming to you from Hollywood, California, and starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> There seem to be two schools of thought among the folks who take breakfast on the sip and run plan. One is the hurry, hurry group. They never have time, they say. The other is the why bother group. They claim they're just not hungry. Well, it so happens that I have the answer for both groups. If you're rushed in the morning, ready to eat grape nuts flakes, take no time to prepare. And if you're in the just not hungry type, why, delicious moldy rich grape nuts flakes will make you hungry. They're so appetizing. Yes, sir, there's tempting zest in every sweet as a nut spoonful. And while grape nuts flakes are exhilarating as an autumn breeze, they also pack a big nutritional wallop. For grape nuts flakes are a basic seven food, a whole grain cereal with all around whole grain nourishment. And that's important at breakfast time, for nutrition experts say we all need at least one quarter of our daily nourishment in the morning. So eat a good breakfast and do a better job. And for downright appetite enjoyment, Help yourself to plenty of delicious, nutritious grape nuts flakes. Gentlemen, immediately after last week's broadcast in New York, Jack Benny and his gang left for California. So now we take you aboard the train where we pick them up one day before their arrival in Hollywood. Hmm, I, I can't understand it. Nothing in Luella Parsons' column about my coming home or Harry Crocker's. Let's see, where'd I put my glasses? Oh, Mary, you've got the other papers. Is there anything in Hedda Hopper's column? Yes, but not about you. I can't understand it. I always say nice things about her hats. <laughs> oh, well. Say, Don, isn't this exciting news about Anthony Eden and Secretary Hull meeting with Joseph Stalin in Moscow? Yes, Mary, all the papers are full of it. Gee, this meeting will really make history. Hmm, nothing about me in Sid Skalsky's column, either. <laughs> Oh, Jack, here's something in Harrison Carroll's column. Where, where? What, what, what? Where, where? Where is it, Mary? I'll give it to you. Get up off your knees. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What does it say? It says, uh, what radio comedian who is heard on what night for what sponsor is having what trouble with his who? <laughs> and how? <laughs> hmm, I, I wonder who that can be. Sounds like what's his name? Maybe. I never even thought of him. <laughs> now, let's see. Hey, here's something that Jimmy Starr got, got about me. Look. At the Macombo last night, Gary Cooper was seen doing the rumba with the shapely Jack Benny. <laughs> <laughs> That's the silliest thing I've ever heard. I wasn't even there. Let's see that. Here. Imagine shapely Jack Benny. That's Joan Bennett and put on your glasses. <laughs> I thought I read that wrong. Anyway, Gary is too tall for me. <laughs> Besides, he's so thin, he hasn't got anything to rumba. <laughs> Jeez, I can't get over it. You'd think that... Some... Hey, kids, look! Hey, look at this headline. Eden and Holler in Moscow with Stalin. Well, what do you know about that? <laughs> Malcolm, say, Malcolm. Uh, what is it, Jerome? Get a load of these military boots I'm shining. Ain't they something? Mm, yes, sir. Who do they belong to? You know, that elderly gentleman in lower eight. Lower eight? Why, that's Mr. Benny. Jack Benny? A doggone, I never recognized him. You look younger in the movies. Well, uh, <laughs> well, those makeup boys, they have a way of taking the wear and tear off of you. <laughs> Amazing. Well, uh, now, what about Mr. Benny's hair? 
in the movies, it's brown. It's not only brown, it's there. <laughs> Amazing. Well, look who's here. Uh, good morning, Rochester. And a good, good morning to you, gentlemen. <laughs> hey, don't those boots belong to my boss? Yeah, how'd you know? It's right there in gold letters, O-B-A-G, Old Blood and Guts. <laughs> Picked them up in North Africa. They're fine ones, all right, but ain't they a little wide and floppy around the top? Yeah, but they fit nice and snug when he gets his underwear tucked in. <laughs> Sharp as a tack. You mean to say Mr. Benny wears long underwear? No, he wears shorts, but where they're supposed to drape, they droop. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, I think we've bandied idle words long enough. Shall we proceed with what we all have in mind? Okay. okay. Fellow members, I am venturing two dollars. What is your reaction? <laughs> I will participate for one. Thank you. And I will absorb the balance. Okay, gentlemen, let us caress the rug with our knees. <laughs> Nothing in Erskine Johnson's column, either. Oh, well. Hiya, kids. Say, Mary, how about a game of gin? You want to play? Okay, Phil. Yeah, that'll pass the time away. Little gin rummy, Phil? No, no. On second thought, Jackson, uh, I think I'll read a while. Oh. How about you, Mary? Want to play a game? Not with you, brother. Whenever you lose, you get sore and gripe and yell, and then you put your toupee on backwards for luck. <laughs> Who, me? Yeah, you. And then every time someone deals the cards, you get so darn suspicious. What are you talking about? Well, look what happened yesterday. When the conductor picked up our railroad tickets, you hollered, let me cut them. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, stop dreaming things up, will hey, you? Jack, why don't you ask Dennis? He might play with you. That's right. Where is he? Oh, well, there he is, way up in the front end of the car. Oh, yes. Hey, Dennis! Dennis! Jack, don't yell like that. We're not the only people in this car. What's the difference? Hey, Dennis! You want to play some gin rummy? No, thanks, Mr. Benny. You never pay off. <laughs> Gee, I'm so embarrassed. Well, that's good for you. Isn't that right, Miss Livingston? <laughs> Quiet. We're not the only people in this car. <laughs> Guess I put that kid in this place. Someday I'm going to... Hey, here comes Rochester. Oh, Rochester, how about a game of gin rummy? No, thanks. I never gamble. <laughs> Oh, well, I'll find somebody on the train to play with me. I wish I was paying my riders enough money so they could afford to gamble. Gamble? They're lucky they can eat. Oh, yeah? They're getting enough to eat. Jack pays them off in grape nuts. <laughs> Mary, that's only part of their salary. They get one-third in grape nuts, one-third in money, and the other third in grape nuts flakes. So there. That's mighty wide of you, Jackson. What do they do with the third they get in cash? They have to buy sugar and cream from Jack. <laughs> do not, and they're very happy with that arrangement. Well, why shouldn't they be? Imagine getting most of your salary in those toasty brown sweet as a nut grape nuts flakes. Yes, and it's so easy to make change that way, you know? <laughs> and not only that, they get one delicious flavor in two distinctive forms. That's right, Don. Well, I'm going into the diner and get something to eat. You join me, Mary? If you promise not to embarrass me in front of the waiter. What do you mean, embarrass you? You're the only man I know who sends a check to Joel Kupperman to see if it's added upright. <laughs> Mary, if Joel doesn't mind, what are you kicking about? Come on, I'll treat you to a meal. Hey, Dennis, what do you say to a little grub? Hiya, grubby. <laughs> well, that's my fault for asking him. Come on, Mary, let's go.
Oh, steward. Steward. Well, Mr. Benny, I see you're making your debut in our dining car. <laughs> hmm. Uh, can you take care of us, steward? Right this way. We're pretty crowded, so would you two mind sharing a table with this young lady? No, 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 not at all. Uh, sit here, Mary. Well, <clears throat> lovely day, isn't it, miss? It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think it's even nicer than it was yesterday. I'll, I'll say. <laughs> Weather's so unpredictable. I mean, tomorrow may be even nicer. It sure might. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's a privilege to sit in on this conversation. <laughs> Mary, you little vixen, you. <laughs> I don't know what to eat. Oh, Stuart, uh, what would you suggest? Well, we have some very nice lamb chops, but unfortunately we can't serve them. Uh, why not? Shortage of panties, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Surprising how many people I trip up with that one. <laughs> Let me see. I know what. Uh, bring me a small steak. Oh, is there another kind? <laughs> Look, Stuart, just bring me the steak and some mashed potatoes. Huh? How about you, Mary? I'll have the same. Very good. Mary, isn't that Stuart kind of silly? I think so. This morning I ordered some grape nuts flakes. Uh-huh. So he brought me a grape nut and told me to flake it myself. <laughs> well, that I don't believe. Say, that looks like a nice dessert you're having, Miss, uh, Miss... A Farrell. Miss Farrell, yeah. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Miss Farrell. This is Miss Livingston... And I'm, uh, I'm Jack Benny. Yeah, I recognize both of you. Well, well, I hope you, I suppose you listen to us on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but to tell you the truth, <laughs> I hope you won't mind my saying it, but I happen to be a Fred Allen fan. <laughs> a Fred Allen fan? Oh, I don't mind at all. In fact, I, I admire anyone who has enough courage to admit it. <laughs> You know, Mrs. Farrell... It's Miss Farrell. Oh, oh, pardon me, pardon me. Miss, Miss Farrell. Yeah, but it'll soon be Mrs. when my boyfriend returns from overseas. Well, that's nice. Congratulations. You know, I just returned from North Africa myself. Oh, then I'm going to show you my boyfriend's picture. Just a second here. Here it is. Well, it's nice looking chap. Yeah, his name is Crowley. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, Joe's a corporal. Has, has he got a brother in New York who drives a cab? Yeah, then you met Joe. Well, here we go again. <laughs> Quiet, Mary. No, no, Miss Farrell, I didn't meet Corporal Crowley. Uh, say, Mary, I wish the food would come. I'm hungry. Me too, I'm starved. I don't know what's keeping the... Cracks his knuckles a lot. Funny you didn't hear him. <laughs> Yes, I, I know, I know. Well, here comes the food, and boy, does that steak look good. See it, Mary, right under the parsley there. <laughs> well, this is your birth, Mary. Have a good night's rest. I will. Good night, Jack. Good night. Gee, it's so early, I don't feel like going to bed yet. Wish I could get somebody to play gin rummy. There must be somebody on the train with a little sporting blood. Isn't it? Oh, oh, hello there. Say, would you be interested in playing a game of gin rummy? No, thanks. My mommy never lets me play with strangers. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, all right. It's just a, just a suggestion. Just a suggestion, that's all. Oh, well, I guess I might as well go to bed. <laughs> Oh, boy, this birth feels good. Nice to be able to stretch out. Yeah, but stop stretching over on my side, will you, Jackson? <laughs> okay, Phil. I don't know why you insist on traveling like this. Now, these births are only built for one. Phil, I know that as well as you do. But these are difficult times. It's tough to get transportation. 
We're lucky we're in here. I suppose so. Not because I didn't want to spend the money. No, no, Jack. <laughs> Perish the thought. <laughs> oh, don't be funny. Anyway, I'm too cramped to argue. All right, then drop. Well, you don't have to get huffy about it, do you? Who's getting huffy? Hey, fellas, be quiet. How do you expect me to sleep here between you two? <laughs> I'm sorry, Dennis. Good night, Phil. Well, there he goes, Mr. Harris. Every night, the same thing. <laughs> Don't worry about it, kid. We're going to be home tomorrow. Gee, I'd like to punch him right in the nose. <laughs> Why don't you, kid? Go ahead, give it to him. I can't. I haven't got room to wind up. Well, I'm similar, I'm similar, I'm similar. Well, I'm similar, I'm similar. Shut up! <laughs> well, good night, kid. I'm going to sleep and try to dream about Alice. Do you mind if I help you? <laughs> hey, hey, fella, fella, where are we? Lower berth number eight. Go back to sleep, will you? And that, ladies, is the Hollywood. We are now back in the thing. I heard on the train on Route Studio, where we hear Dennis Day singing. I heard hear Dennis Day singing night. Pride last night. <laughs> It's good to be back in the studio. That was I Heard You Cried Last Night, sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, all I can say is that was Trey Bien. And now, folks... Well, no wonder. I haven't slept for three days. <laughs> Dennis, in the first place, I complimented you. And in the second place, we had to sleep in the same berth on account of, trans on account of transportation problems. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I'm Wally Mayer of the United Press. Well, well, always glad 
See the gentleman of the press? Yeah. Now that you're back in Hollywood, I understand you're going to make a picture for Warner Brothers. Is that right? Yes. How are the brothers taking it? <laughs> Lying down. Quiet. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'm starting it next month. The title of my new picture... Is it is... true that uh, while in Egypt you bought a camel and you're having it shipped to Hollywood? Yes, yes, and I expected to arrive at the same time I start my new picture, which is called... What cities did you visit in North Africa? <laughs> well, I, I was in Cairo, Benghazi, Tunis. Tunis is where I received a cable telling me that the title of my new picture is the Horn... Were you in Casablanca? <laughs> Yes, yes, Casablanca, yes. I gave that story to a reporter last week. Well, tell me, were you in Algiers? What did you say, mister? <laughs> I said, were you in Algiers? Was I in Algiers? Let me tell you a story, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Come closer. This will be interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> Algiers in 1938, a gay modern city teeming with commerce from all the seven seas, while above the city, grim, silent, and mysterious, lie the tangled buildings and the twisted streets of the native quarters known as the Casbah. <laughs> yes, the Casbah the hideout of the notorious jewel thief, Charles Pepe Lamoco Boyer. <laughs> Here we find two members of his gang, Three Finger Harris and Dennis the Derelict. <laughs> Say, Three Finger. What is it, Derelict? I'm worried about Pepe. He said he'd be here at 7 o'clock and it's 5.30 already. So you still got an hour and a half. What are you worrying now for? Well, it takes me a little while to get rolling. <laughs> If Peppy's out with that girl he met yesterday, I'll fill him so full of holes it'll look like an apple at a worm convention. Oh, now don't be so jealous, Inez. Peppy loves you. Why, he's crazy about you. Oh, sure. I work and I slave, and what do I get? A Peppy Lamoco with a baldy cocoa. <laughs> Wait a minute, Inez. Lamoco's cocoa is no joko. <laughs> Not since he waxed it with gloco. <laughs> All right, everybody. Here comes Peppy now. Hello, Peppy. Hello, Three Finger. <laughs> well, gentlemen, uh, I have brought the pearls which we stole last night. Here they are. Oh, boy. Now listen to me. These are not enough. Tomorrow night, I'm going to send you to the ball at the Beverly Algiers. <laughs> it is right across the street from the Brown Fairs. <laughs> there will be beautiful ladies there. <laughs> and even more beautiful jewels. Ah. And remember, Three Finger, this time when you bring back the jewels, you will first remove the ladies. <laughs> Now, here is what you must do. Shh. Maybe the police. Hide the jewels, quick. Good. I'll put them in the cookie jar. The cookie jar, good. They will never suspect. <laughs> Come in. Ah, it is you, Inspector Wilson. What brings you to the Casbah? Well, Peppy, I've come to tell you that the police are looking for you. There were some jewels stolen last night. Now, where are they? Jewels? What jewels? <laughs> Sit down, my friend. Make yourself at home. Will you have a cookie, Inspector? <laughs> Derelict, leave the room. <laughs> he make Joe. Someday I laugh till he die. <laughs> have some tea, Inspector. No, thanks. I've got to go. But I'm worrying you, Poppy. Stay out of the city. You're worrying me. Hmm. Are you scarred, Chief? That's scared. <laughs> Do not worry, Three Finger. They will never get old blood and guts, Lamoco. <laughs> I will call my bodyguard. 
Oh, Pierre. Pierre. Oui, oui, boss. <laughs> you are my bodyguard. Why do you let Inspector Wilson enter the Casbah? Just go, booty. <laughs> I said, pourquoi permettez-vous l'inspecteur Wilson d'entrer la casbah? Parce qu'il est plus grand, a plus fort que je suis. And besides, he packs a rod. <laughs> now listen, Pierre. And remember all of you. I am master of the casbah. You will do as I say. All except me. Ah, it is you. Hello, Inez. Hello, Pappy. I am Pappy. I eat grape nuts. <laughs> you are trembling, Inez. What is the matter, my little dog? Don't dub me, you two-timing wolf. What about that other dame, the one I saw you with last night in the cafe? Do not worry, Inez. It was just a flirtation. Believe me. Well, if I see you with her again, I'll take this gun and make Warner Brothers happy. <laughs> oh, yes, that remind me. The name of my new picture is... I'm uh, warning you, Peppy. This gun is loaded. Ha, ha, ha. My little cobra. Claudette cobra. <laughs> <laughs> that I just put in here. It is nothing. Nothing. <laughs> it is what you call ad lib, ad lib. <laughs> ah, my little cobra, you are so excited. Come here. Close your eyes and kiss, Peppy. How else do you think I can do it? <laughs> now listen to me, Inez. Hey, Peppy, Peppy. What is it? That beautiful girl you had tea with yesterday has come to the cash bay and wants you to see you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then she did come back like she promised. My heady. Aha, uh -huh. I knew you were lying to me, you dog, you puppy. I am Peppy. <laughs> You're in love with that other dame, but you'll never live to see her again, Peppy, because I'm gonna kill you. I know you are insane. Put down that gun. Hey, Chief, Chief. What is it, Pierre? Look, look. Here she comes now, Miss Hetty. Hetty. My Hetty. You must remember this. <laughs> a kiss, sister, a kiss. A sigh is just a sigh. <laughs> Hetty, that is Ingrid. Ingrid, what are you doing in Algiers? You didn't pay me last week for Casablanca. <laughs> <laughs> pay you? The fundamental things apply. As time goes people are having the best time doing the right thing nowadays than they've ever had in years. Want to know what these folks are? They're the folks who are helping make Uncle Sam's new food program click by sharing and playing square with foods, by buying and serving more of the foods that are plentiful and unrationed. Plentiful foods like grape nuts and grape nuts flakes. And now you can see where the enjoyment part comes in because grape nuts and grape nuts flakes are not only plentiful, nourishing, and thrifty, hence the type of food we're asked to eat more of, they're also perfectly swell eating, moldy, rich, and sweet as a nut. Each with a delicious, crispy texture all its own. And both are basic seven foods that supply all around whole grain nourishment. So let's all get on Uncle Sam's bandwagon with its slogan, Food Fights for Freedom. And while en route, you'll find grape nuts and grape nuts flakes make jolly good breakfast company. Good night, folks. Hot, hot, and oh so good. Try Grape Nuts Wheat Meal, folks, you should. Hot member of the Grape Nuts clan, enjoy it once, you'll be a fan. Yes, Grape Nuts Wheat Meal is a treat. It's rich and brown, it's real whole wheat. It brings fine nourishment indeed, one kind your government says you need. It cooks in just three minutes flat, and you'll admit you can't beat that. Get Grape Nuts Wheat Meal right away. Hot cereal for a cold fall day. <laughs> 